Well, we had one of the biggest comebacks in NFL history. We had perhaps the last game of Tom Brady's career. We had closer than expected games for Buffalo and for Cincinnati, and now those two teams will meet this weekend. We had a lot of fun watching football over the weekend, and we can't wait to break it down for you here right now on Fantasy Football Today on this Tuesday. Hope you had a great uh, holiday weekend. Hope you enjoyed all the games. I'm Adam Azer. I got three dudes with me, Dave Richard, Jamie Eisenberg, and Heath Cummings. Wow. Hey, Heath, we haven't heard from you in a while. What's going on, man? What a f- congratulations. Like, you, you really buried the lead. Daniel Jones. I mean, I thought he was going to get $100 million. He's going to get at least $250 million now. <laughs> Be the quarterback of the Giants for the next decade. Don't, don't you think the Vikings should get some of that money? Aren't they basically his agent? I mean, they are making him look so good in two of his last three games. Well, I was um, I was on a camping trip this weekend with a Vikings fan, and oh. so um, that Thomas portion Schaefer? that portion of the trip did not go very well. But yeah, the defense. Yeah. I I feel bad for Kirk Cousins. Uh, yeah, he played very well, and everybody I think was covered on that last play. We'll talk about it a little bit more. But Dave, good good uh, afternoon to you. How are you? Howdy. A uh, fun weekend of action for sure. Lots of good play to go around. And did we just witness the demise of Tom Brady part two? Like I, I feel exactly, I feel exactly the same as his last game in new England, mm. that playoff game against Tennessee. He was absolutely terrible in that game. He was worse than the, he, yeah. he was pretty bad. Yeah. All things considered against Dallas. Sure. I didn't, well, I, I expected the Cowboys to win. I thought it would be a closer game, not a route like this. Dak played amazing. I'd like to hear from someone else and and not Jamie. I'd like to bring in a special guest if you guys are okay with that. I'd like to bring in Nando DeFino. Hey, Nando. We got a special guest today. (laughs) What's up? How's it going? You know, you're you're a very special guest, Nando, but we have another special guest. I'd like to bring in Scott Fish, ladies and gentlemen. Oh! What's going on, guys? How many people can come on this thing? thing. Uh, Yeah, so Scott Scott is actually busy right now, so you can hear some feedback on his phone. So I'm just going to mute his phone when he's not speaking. Scott, bring in Dave Azer. No, no, Dave (laughs) is here, and the four of us are here. And, Jamie, it seems like a great day to have all of our friends joining us, doesn't it? It, it? It, it, it really does. You know, we should probably get a little bit more help. I think we need a few more people to, uh, to, to come in as well uh, because it's a, it's a very, uh, very, very exciting, special, um, special moment here on, on, on. on Fantasy Football today. Um, well, we'll uh, this is uh, coming what into is the this? studio now. What, it's it's Meryl Berkson. Uh, we have some other special guests coming in, coming in to join us as well, Meryl. Yeah. We do. Uh, we do. Come on. Come on in, everybody. Come, come in. Come in. A lot of... Uh, a lot of special guests here uh, joining us here on on FFT along with uh, the great Scott Fish and, and Nando Defino. Come in, guys. Come in. Come in. This Man. is uh, Aaron Berkson, one of uh, the original Fantasy Football Today producers. This is uh, Jack Capitorto, one of our other uh, Fantasy Football Today producers. A lot of our staff here on Fantasy Football Today. And um, uh, well, hold on, hold on. We haven't we haven't we haven't revealed it yet. 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 But very special announcement here on Fantasy Football Today. Congratulations. Class of 2022, FSWA Hall of Famer, Dave Richard. Look at your face. Look how happy you are. I, I, I mean, listen, listen. Uh, this, this is this is something that is well overdue. You you busted your ass for many many years in this business. You're one of the best to ever do it. There's not a Hall of Fame without you in it, and it's so well deserved. So congratulations, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Holy hell. Is everybody here? <laughs> who's, run, who's running HQ? <laughs> this is unbelievable. You guys are amazing. Um, you're you're a jerk because I've told you for years to not do this. But since you did, thank you, thank you very much. I'm coming over. Not the hair. Not the hair. Dave, <laughs> can you hear me? Can you give a thumbs up if you hear me? I got you. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, got, we got a show to do. <laughs> right. Hey, oh, thank you guys. Thank you. Seriously. I'm going to let, uh, right, let right, Scott right, Fish go. Uh, but first, I think he wants to say something. Let me just get Dave. He's doing his hugs. Scott is actually one of the people who voted 
on this uh, incredible award here, this incredible uh, presentation, and he voted for I'm, Dave. I, so I don't think Dave can hear us yet. Jamie, can you hear me? No, Dave, Dave's plugging back in. All right, so when Dave plugs back in, I'm going to bring – I'm here. Back. I'm here. All right, Dave. So Scott Fish actually voted for you, so I think he wants to say something to you. Go ahead, Scott. <sighs> yeah, Dave, I actually I, – I did vote for you. The votes I, the votes I made were, were for good reason. You consistently support and help people – not just behind the scenes, but also on on camera. You're so you're so good. You're so good with your writing, the trade chart. I don't remember anyone doing a trade chart before you. Um, oh, Scott, I'm sorry. I'm Scott. sorry. Well, I'm beautiful. sorry. I'm in. Holy crap! <laughs> that was so, killing me. I have to let Scott so, just because the connection wasn't good. But Scott, you give us a nice thumbs up. We appreciate it, man. Uh, you're the man. Enjoy, enjoy Disney, Scott. But there's there's one more surprise as part of this. You're not the only person going into the class of 2022 FSWA Hall of Fame. Not me. Nando DeFino will be in the class with you. So yeah! the two of you, the two of you are in the class of 2022 F SWA Did Hall you know of Fame. that? Uh, no. <laughs> not, this is supposed to be a Here's surprise a for both for of you. Jamie, too. Oh, Jamie. <laughs> so, so it couldn't have been a, a better class. Uh, I, I wish I could share with you here. I'll share with you off the air all, all the things that were said in the committee about the two of you. Uh, just unbelievable for both of you. What you mean to the fantasy industry, what you mean to uh, the, the, the analyst community, what you guys have done, as Scott was you know, trying to say. Um, you know, and, and I'm sure he would have said the same okay. thing about Nanda, what you guys have done for, for the fantasy community, fantasy writers, helping people get jobs, um, helping people win in their leagues. Uh, That's not, what matters to me. Not Nando for various sports as well. So um, kudos to both of you. Very well deserved. Yeah. And, you know, just a, a pleasure and a privilege and an honor to have worked with both of you and to be a friend. Yeah. Awesome. I want to Thank announce you, the official start of the Jamie 2024 campaign. Right now. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Except we're going to spell it J A M I. Now we can finally. Angry. Yeah. I mean, I, I would have been okay if you had gotten in, and I never got in. Well, it's, I, uh, long I really, long long this was long never long a goal longer. of mine. This was never what I, you know, you CBS know takes really good care of us. So you know what I, this was? What? Sorry, Heath. I know you got, I'll let you get in there. This was. <laughs> oh, no, not that. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> well. No, that wasn't it. It was. Uh, Oh. oh, he's going to play the game of the week. This yeah, is so pitch perfect that he's messing up his sound. The game of the week, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that would have that would have been the best way to do it ever. We, we, uh, we didn't discuss it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um, uh, go ahead, Heath. Yeah, I mean, I think like both of these guys, I feel like I, I owe the fact that I uh, even have this job. I mean, first off, Nando left without that. <laughs> yeah, <seriously. laughs> Thank you for leaving, Nando. And, and Dave, like I remember when I applied for this job and they flew me down, I did an interview and um, a few, few of you were in the office that day. And Dave was the guy who a couple days later sends me a direct message via Twitter. It was the first time I'd ever met him in my life. And just like, gives me encouragement over that interview and over like the positivity he was hearing. And then I get hired and like a month into my tenure, he's still helping me out. He gave me a $5,000 chandelier to deliver to Key West on my first <laughs> vacation. And that was a special uh, moment. No, but in all seriousness, you guys are Titans in this industry and, and Oh, me and the people who came Jeez. after me stand, stand on your shoulders. Oh, stand on your shoulders. We, we feel like Titans when we, Tell people to sit, you know, Benjamin, and then he goes off on a Thursday night game, and I'm up till two in the morning questioning my life's decisions. Well, uh, no, congratulations not tight, to both of you. But we, we, we all work hard. Heath, you belong in, too. <laughs> Everybody involved on this show deserves to be in the Hall of Fame except for Adam. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, Nando, thank you very much. We'll let you go. Congratulations. Oh, he's not Thanks. saying after all this? Yeah, I thought you and maybe you and Heath should go. And me, Jamie, and Dave should go. <laughs> yeah. I'm, going. I'm going. I told, I told Nando, Nando he had to do the whole show, whole show with the whiteboard. <laughs> Heath is going. Nando's going. Thank you all guys right. for dropping in. We appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Jamie, Great thank later. you, Jamie. Oh, thank Jamie you. Eisenberg. What a guy. He held a door for me my first day at CBS. <laughs> Jamie Eisenberg. And Dave <laughs> Richard introduced me to Flanagan's. So this means a lot. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I think I'm going to get that for lunch tomorrow. Listen, uh, let's let's get back to business here, guys. But uh, actually, a few other friends want to say hello to you. James, oh, wait, oh, there's more. Here. There's more. Oh, cute! <laughs> Our former FFP producer. Oh. Yeah, the voice of the Raiders. But wait, there's, there's more. more. Hi, Dave! Jason! Hi, Dave! 
This is the best show ever. <laughs> There's more. No, wait. <laughs> Downtown, let's go. What's up, dude? Dude, what this is the best. I wish I made the Hall of Fame 10 years ago, and then we could have all gotten together and done this. Listening to we would have gone to quality meets. Listening to all this oh. praise of Dave and Eno Benjamin and staying up till two in the morning. I mean, goodness gracious. Like, how did you not start Jared Stidham in week 17? <laughs> I, the best, the number one I don't know, man. NFL. My, my best know. Raider source never got back to me with what Jared Stidham would do. I think my best Raider me. source couldn't even tell me about Jacobs in week 18. I had to go through a different guy. To you, get that. you asked, you asked me in the preseason, Hey, what's the Jacobs situation? Like, I think I'm like, I think they might split carries. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> So, Adam, introduce everybody so our audience knows yeah. who we're talking to. Here. What's up? Not Q? that they need introduction. Hey, what's up, guys? So Q! Q used to produce uh, the Fantasy Football Today Sunday show for the first producer. The first one. Cre- creator with you guys. Creator. 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 Yep. Peter Smith. Hey, and I'll, I'll say one thing to you, Dave, just for you, okay, buddy? Change. Yeah! <laughs> 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 uh, oh my gosh uh, well the three of you know how special those saturday nights and sunday mornings were uh oh, for yes. fantasy football today in new york and rare was it when all of us were together for one of those shows but whenever pieces of of us were together for those shows they were absolutely special epic quality times and uh i'm just i'm really grateful to know each of you you've each played an important role in my career and I wouldn't be who I was today without any of you three. So really, really grateful that you guys managed to stop by and, and say, Hey, and yeah, in the case of, yeah, I talked to Nathan and Jason plenty Q. I don't know what happened when we are talking. <laughs> He's at the group. The home. Let's go. You know, we gotta, we gotta home. get back on track with that dude. But, uh, I, I keep up with what you're doing and, uh, I love to, I, you know, Q and I are friends on Facebook. And so I'm watching his his daughter grow up, and I'm watching Q go on with his life, and and occasionally post a picture of Clyde Frazier. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I see that you're doing great, and that always it always makes me smile to see you, and this is no exception to that. And I'm glad you're here, Q. And uh, Jason, I've just known you, you forever. Nathan, known you forever. Um, Heath was talking about the first time I met him. I remember the first time I met Nathan. And there, there were no handshakes. It was only bro. Oh, wait a minute. There was uh, a handshake. There was a hand. Oh, you. The bag of powers. The, the bag of powers. Yeah. Uh, that was good when we were wasted on Saturday nights. Um, the, no, but like uh, you guys are very special to me, all three of you. So, Dave, I, I don't think I don't think everybody fully realizes this. I know in this group they do, but your listening audience probably does not. CBS. They've already I, left. The listening audience is gone. Oh, <laughs> well, then, yeah, they, 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 this this is not what they tuned in for. <laughs> they did, no, you got a lot like, of heavy hitters here, dude. Yeah. You've been at the start. You were at CBS when CBS had video for the internet launching. It yep. was me, you, some slubby guy that we all love named Michael Fabiano and Pat <laughs> Kerwin. Yeah. And 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 then Jamie came, I believe, a year later. A year later. A year later. But all yep. of that's back in like 2005 when people were like, hey, let's do this thing, video for the internet. And my first thought was, why am I going to do video for the internet <laughs> when I could go be a sports reporter in El Paso, Texas? And, <laughs> and I decided to do video for the internet because my f- girlfriend at the time, now a wife of 14 plus years, was moving to New York and they're like, we'll move you to New York. And I'm like, sold. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and lo and behold, here comes Dave Richard flying up from Florida to do. Do you remember our studio? Yeah. It was the it was size a of a closet. It literally yeah, yep. actually might've just been a closet. It, it may have been a closet before. Uh, I believe there was this green screen behind us. We had one like it. The whole room was, the whole room was green. Yeah. Room. Yeah. It must've been. Do you remember Tom? I Curley? remember the music. I think you can still find some of those videos on YouTube. We, oh, it was totally. so ancient that we would we would tape a start sit segment on Tuesday. Yep, yep. And we'd have to say, "Cut this guy out, cut right, that right, guy right. out, because he's hurt." The segment would be forty five <laughs> seconds by the time it was Friday. Well, but those uh, were the those were the early early days, and then the days got bigger and better. And uh, I mean, Nathan and Q know all about that when the show was put yep. on CBS Sports Network and oh man we, uh, we we were having a great time Brian Westbrook was a part of those shows the US uh, Silver Randall Randy Cross was a part of the shows Armani Toomer oh, yeah. Brian Jones yeah 
Brian Jones. How could I forget about BJ? Did you forget oh Brian God. Jones? How, I don't know why. It's he, hot he as the that. first one. <laughs> <laughs> well guys thanks for for uh yeah nathan i don't really think you got to say anything so let me throw it over to you um and thank you guys for coming on to be part of this appreciate it well first of all congratulations dave what an honor and certainly a very fitting honor for you and it was and that was some of the best times of my professional life was when we were out in new york quality yeah. meets we do the show you know whether we were down on the river and then that got wiped out we had superstorm sandy i think it was that wiped us out and then we ended up at mlb playing yes. some ball yeah. wiffle ball in that little stadium it was just the oh, best of times uh, elite it was it was epic but you know people still come up to me and ask me about tag team tuesday when i was on sirius and you would come on and we'd play the rock and wrestling theme song and <laughs> people would absolutely love it so dude it's awesome to see that you have what i think is so cool is you stay the same you are the same downtown dave that jamie yeah. met probably you know all the yeah. way back yep. in the day and yep. jason met back in 2005 and q met a long time ago and azer met a long time ago and and it's just awesome and i think it's allowed us to stay you know close even though we haven't necessarily worked together for a decade we're still in the there and, and talking all the time and, and following you guys and you guys are still helping me which is great because I'm certainly not into it much like Jason who's probably very Raiders centric I'm very Brown centric at this point uh, which actually in 2023 might not be bad wasn't even that bad this year to be perfectly honest so anyway <laughs> just con just congratulations to you uh, a Hall of Famer and it's it's fitting for for a man of of your stature your prestige I just have one request though with the at the Hall of Fame induction ceremony in my mind there's obviously a massive one I'd like you to wear the snickers suit because yes. that was still one of my that was still one of my favorite memory moments on the show you're talking oh uh, nathan like, he busted out every now and then uh, once he looks while. like a snickers bar right now and we all look and we're all dying on set it was great all those right, were in the days where i really like chocolate brown Oh, uh, baby. Yeah, you did. But maybe I sure if I yeah. is there a speech? Is there a ceremony? Uh, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. <laughs> I, I, I was actually wondering where is the Hall of Fame located? Like where are we gonna have to go for the induction ceremony? Where do we need to what weekend? I what think plan? this is it. I think it's happening right now. I, I think this is this is the speech. This is it. It's big. Uh, uh, um, All right. uh, I, Nathan, uh, Jason, I'll annoy you guys with questions about your teams later. Maybe. I know nothing. <laughs> I know a little best. more than I that. live 2,800 miles away from my team. I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and Q, I'll bug you about the Knicks. All right, buddy, we're doing good. Hey, uh, I, I know you. Say, hey, Nathan, thanks for not bringing up the grand slam you hit off me. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> uh, right, right, onto the, the right onto the buttocks of that cow. Right on. It was one of the great moments of all time. <laughs> I, think, right. I think you want to is out there pitching. Boom. I'm sorry. Hey. I did strike out B West twice, so I don't care. You did. Yeah. You yeah. did. So just hey, no, seriously, so Dave, Dave, I just want to say, bro, you are so deserving of this, bro. And you're not only as a fantasy writer, but you're like one of the best dudes I've ever met. You're just honest, like you genuine. Mean. You are the best dude. So congrats, man. I just want to tell you that. All right. Awesome, Q. Thank you. Thank you very much. I am. We need to talk more, James <laughs> Questel. Yeah. You should be in touch more, man. So thank you, boys. Thank you. Congratulations. Love love you. Thank you. To, your lady, to the ladies in your life, Q. And love to your families, Jason and Nathan. You too, buddy. Same you, buddy. to you, brother. Thank you. All right. I feel like I'm dying. <laughs> <laughs> this is your life. <laughs> Someone's about to come. Is, is, hey, wait, we're not done. <laughs> we're, we're not done. We're not done. <laughs> we're not done. I, I, do, is there a cancer <laughs> diagnosis coming? I, I mean. Oh, you're good. You're good. You're good. I mean, is my wife coming on? She, no, there's no way she I, knows this. She would have No, no, me. no. I, I didn't want to give anybody, give anybody a chance. That's why I asked you before the show. Your parents watching. <laughs> Just oh. in case. <laughs> so, Jamie, we have, we have one more guest. And maybe we could talk a little fantasy with him too if he's if he's down. Well, I mean, he loves it. P. Prisco. Hey! <laughs> Wait a second. It's shocking that you guys kept me waiting. A. And it's shocking <laughs> that I'm filling fantasy football content. B. Even when it's not the regular <laughs> season. And C. Because I like doing A, B, and C. Dave, look. <laughs> mild cheddar. Look, mild cheddar. You can see. Yeah. It. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. Some mild cheddar. <laughs> So yeah. mozzarella for you, buddy. There you oh, go. Okay. You know, I know where this is going. I got you know what that's for? That's for the Hall of Famer because he had a Hall of Fame moment once in the green room <laughs> when he got a cow zone and he somebody heard him mumble under his breath, mmm cheese. <laughs> Did not happen. 
<laughs> I, I swear, I've told Nick Costos a dozen times that I didn't say mm cheese. I, I might have said I the think, mm. I think mm. I, we've gone back to the source about five or different five different ways. I am the source, time. Pete. No. No, you denied it. You can't. It was because such a I know what the for truth you is. that you were in such throes of ecstasy that you were. <laughs> I'm not denying the ecstasy. It was a really good calzone. Most calzones are pretty damn good. But I don't think I've ever talked about the food I've eaten. You've known me 15 plus years. Mm -hmm. How many times have I said the food I'm eating as if I'm having sex with the food? <laughs> that was one. <laughs> it wasn't one. Well, you know why? First and foremost, you've never seen a calzone that big, so it kind of played into exactly what you were doing. Well, hey, then why wouldn't I Dave, say calzone? Mmm, calzone. Seriously, congratulations on the Hall of Fame, dude. You're, you're a Hall of Fame I don't know. Dude. I, it's you're, crazy. Like they all said, you're one of the five nicest human beings I've ever met in my life, and I'm serious about that. You are wow. genuine. You are nice as can be. You never get your feathers ruffled. Even when we say you're sponsoring the pizza that gets delivered every Sunday <laughs> with the kickback on it, which we know well, you That's because I am. You still don't get riled up. I'm serious. You're one of the no. five nicest guys I've ever met. And congratulations. You do a great job. And you earn the right to be in the Hall of Fame. Thank you, Pete. I don't know if I've earned it, um, but I've been doing this job for a long time, so maybe I get the longevity award. Pete, yeah, but that doesn't work. Been doing... Believe me, that doesn't get you into the Hall yeah. of Fame. I know. No, no, no. Not. But you, I know, I know. But you deserve to be in the the Hall of Fame, the real Hall of Fame. Um, everybody that's been to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I'm not talking about the bus. I don't think anybody's going to make a bust of your noggin. But I, I, there is a, a section there. For the best writers that have covered the National Football League, and Pete, you've been doing this for longer than I've been doing fantasy. So, uh, on Appreciate I now it. have two guys to get. I, I honestly four guys that I need to help. Well, you know get what's into the really great about this segment? You know what's really great about this segment with me? There was supposed to be somebody <laughs> else on the segment. With yeah. me. Don't get Prince in the Hall of Fame because he didn't invite so to show vintage. up. It's so vintage <laughs> that he didn't show up. He'll show up Where at the, the end of the show. He's 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 late. Where the hell is Will Brinson? I mean, it's like that's like the same. It's no, it's no different. Doesn't matter if it's an award ceremony or work or whatever. Where the hell is Will Brinson? Yeah, that's what, every mock draft we ask the same. <laughs> we just call you know what's even better about it, Azer? Is what's Jamie that? texted us. Like he told us yesterday, eleven ten, which we were late, of course. And I texted Jamie to remind him. But <laughs> you know what? He's texting that early. He's texting ten minutes early, twenty minutes early, because he's trying to remind Brinson. Where the hell is he? One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, I, I didn't expect Will. I thought it was fifty fifty. I thought it was fifty fifty. But, yeah. <laughs> Maybe he'll come on later. Dave, you you should feel proud that Will Brinson continues his his usual ways of not showing up on time for you yes it's, it's just been he is on brand for sure we were we were texting during the canes nc state game this, this past weekend and oh. by texting i mean i texted him wow what a game and he never responded so, <laughs> so what what's the next step do you get a trophy participation I, trophy I, I, I you got a balloon. I, I get this big giant <laughs> balloon, Pete. I don't know if you can see it, but it's that's it's, awesome. This is, that's awesome. And uh, this will look, sit somewhere put, in the office. If they do for... give you like an award or trophy or something, you can put it next to all the fifty participation trophies you have. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm bringing home some pretty good trophies from this year in fantasy, Pete. So. No participation. Oh, you mean the player prop trophy? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. That was a prop. That was that's a, not that a real trophy. But we should and, we should get do a and, real trophy for that. But you know, seriously, it's it's a great honor. And uh, next step, it is a great Jamie honor. Eisenberg into yes. the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Jamie Hopefully, acts Jamie like, doesn't wait. You know, Jamie acts all down low. He gets in there immediately. Oh, yeah, he wants in too, just like you. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're getting in first, Pete. You deserve it first. Yeah, agreed on that. We, we have a lot of really great people who deserve to be in the Hall of Fame. You're one of them. You're one of them. So. We will. It'll get. It'll happen. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate that. I'm sorry, <laughs> Pete. <laughs> Thanks for coming out. I might as well have been talking to Brinson. <laughs> all right, guys. Just let me know if Brinson ever shows up. That's all I want to know. You, you already know the answer. You'll be the first yeah. to know. All right, guys. Guess what? Yeah. The answer is no. <laughs> yeah. All, all right. right. Woo, Dave. Congratulations. You've been. Thank uh, you. Uh, Thank you, Jamie. Love, love working. Congratulations. With you. Thank you. All right. You ready to talk some football? <laughs> Are, I mean, is there actually a show to do, or is, is it just going to be so, everybody telling me? So originally, originally, 
uh, the call the call for the committee was Friday. And I forgot how the process works. I thought we were gonna, and that, that, I thought that was gonna be done there. So I told Adam, I'm like, we gotta, we gotta do this before they let out the announcement, uh-huh. or they say announcement. So I'm like, oh, we're gonna do a, uh, we're gonna tell Dave, we're, we're gonna do a, a DFS show. That it's, it's a mandatory DFS okay. show. <laughs> we're thinking of anything. And I would, I would not have thought anything of it. I would have showed up like an idiot. <laughs> I've, I've been texting all these people for like two weeks. <laughs> like, it, it's gonna Has happen. Been going on for two weeks. Well, I mean, I had a pretty good yeah. idea. You're gonna get in, so. I really want to get the show started, but Brinson just showed up now. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't let him on. Don't let him on. <laughs> I'm only right, going to him... if he's going to talk football with us because we got to talk football here. So. Unfortunately, I'm logged into the account. I, I can that. do whatever yes. I want. <laughs> you can add yourself to the stream. That's... I can end the broadcast right now. <laughs> he's adding That's himself. Cool. Dave! <laughs> I just showed up to tell you that NC State beat Miami, buddy. How you yeah, doing? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Adam, Adam, I don't know if you saw this. I did see Tim it. Tim uh, didn't, uh, didn't get the W in rally. That's all right. I did see that, uh, but uh, both teams are ranked, so that's good stuff. All right, so listen. What am I doing here? You're, you're congratulating Dave. <laughs> you're done. You don't have to Dave, do anything Dave, else. Dave, Dave I, I got to tell you, this is probably the second greatest moment in my in my career at CBS, getting to congratulate you on making the Fantasy Football Hall of Fame. You know what number one is, right? When I got to wear a dress on set. Oh yes, <laughs> <laughs> you were my you, wife. When you and I showed up to Fort Lauderdale on a Thursday afternoon, <laughs> and I walk in the office, and and Jamie and Dave are cackling. Like, what is so funny? They're like, well, we're going to be the Flintstones for Halloween. I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like, we're already the guys. <laughs> <laughs> and Joy's one of the girls. <laughs> so Joy Taylor. <laughs> Joy Taylor was Betty. <laughs> and Will was. Was I was, 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 was your wife? Whose wife was I? Mine. I was Fred Flintstone. So Dave, Dave. <laughs> How can I your, not be? From your, from your, from your. Uh, work wife, congratulations, buddy. <laughs> I'll have a good chip. Thank you, Will. <laughs> and there you go. Perfect. 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 Let Pete know that Will made his appearance. Who's our fan? Who's our biggest fantasy winner, Jamie? From the weekend. Uh, the biggest fantasy winner of the weekend. Oh, there's a lot of different directions you can go with this. Uh, I'm going Dave, to say the oh, biggest. Dave, congratulations, Dave. Oh, stop. Uh, can we just go on with the damn yes, show? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, the biggest winner aside How from Dave you? getting Hall of Fame. Um, I'm going to say it is Daniel Jones because yes. he has put himself in the position <clears throat> to be potentially drafted as a starter next year. He is one of nine quarterbacks. I don't know if you're aware of this. One of nine quarterbacks in NFL history. With three thousand rushing, three thousand passing yards, and seven hundred rushing yards in the same season, so if he's able to do that, which it seems like he's pretty capable of doing, then that's going to make him a, a potential top twelve guy. So you know, you're seeing, let's say, Tua slide, uh, and and I think at this point it's easy to say, factoring health, that Daniel Jones is probably a safer play right now than Tua, assuming that he's back with the Giants. He's done this without any semblance of a standout receiver. Um, he's made guys, and, and Brian Dable's made guys look good, Isaiah Hodgins and. Richie James and, you know, at times throughout the season, Wondell Robinson and, and Darius Slayton. Uh, so hopefully that's a position that they address. The offensive line should be good. I hope Saquon stays as well. And so Daniel Jones, I think, you know, based on – you said it, Adam. It's the, it's the Vikings. It's a great matchup. But, you know, he's really done it for a good portion of the season as well. And so, you know, when you look 3,700, nine guys have done it. It's, it's hard to overlook what he could be and could, or could continue yeah. to be. Well, it's a big weekend, in my opinion, for him because it's, it's one thing – look at the last three games he's played. It's been the Vikings twice and the Colts. And he's great in those games. If he can, just, he doesn't even have to have a great game against the Eagles, but just you know, be be good again and um, show kind of mastering the offense the way he's been. It's gonna be it's gonna be really interesting on draft day. He's gonna have a lot of helium, I think. Uh, Dave, who's the biggest fantasy loser? I, I think I I, I think this isn't gonna be exciting. This is kind of lame and it's kind of obvious, but. I wonder where Adam Thielen is going to be next year and if he even gets drafted. You look at this Vikings offense and how they operate. Hawkinson is going to have a huge role. Justin Jefferson's Justin Jefferson. I bet KJ Osborne takes a jump and becomes their number I wonder two if receiver. Thielen if Thielen stays. You know, I don't know what his cap number is, but he's um, a candidate to be cut. So I, I did it's it's on the site now, uh stock up, stock down of of guys from the playoffs. So 
uh, Daniel Jones and, and Hodgins and, and, and Saquon, I combined them all as winners. Uh, some of the guys who I, I, I thought lose a little bit of value, and it's not necessarily just because this weekend, but, you know, the season. Uh, so the five stock down guys for me were Justin Herbert. Um, you know, you just yeah, factor in the, in the entire season. And, and again, he threw the ball 40 plus times and one touchdown under 300 yards passing. Um, Dalvin Cook. You know, who's just had a really bad season uh, as well. And you, you were to say 21 touches and six catches, and he comes away with 13 PPR points, didn't score. You know, it's uh, it's it's just been a bad year for him. Uh, Joe Mixon, I know it was a tough matchup against the the Ravens, but he only had, I think it was three games over 17 PPR points per game. Uh, he had the huge game as we we've noted time and time again against Carolina, and everything that's around him should make him better. You know, another year older, you know, you wonder if he's still worth taking in round two. Um, uh, I have Brandon Ayuk as a loser because we see what, what happens when everybody's healthy, you know, and so another, you know, bad game for him with everybody out there. And so, uh, it makes me a little nervous. And then Jalen Waddle, you know, I, I think, you know, we've seen sort of what's happened. He's played five games this season without Tua Tonga Bailoa. Four of those, he's been nine PPR points or less. So very small sample size, but you know, if, if Tua is not back and they don't find, uh, an upgrade, for example, you know, if Tua's health is, is a concern. You know, I don't know if Jalen Wild is going to be a second round pick, as as I think a lot of us haven't pegged for based on our rankings so far. So those are five guys for me that you know just you got to keep an eye on. I think this offseason, just coming off the playoffs, obviously there's a lot of different predictions to go. Thielen is 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 certainly in the mix, um, but you know just looking at some of the things that happened in the playoffs and factoring what happened in the season, uh, those those were just five guys that I pointed out. So those are guys that you're expecting their draft value to be worse than what it was last year. So it, it, you know, is it based strictly off the No, no, game? no. Part, part of it is, the whole part, part of it is you know, so I, I've been very ingrained in our rankings because I've been writing about our top 12 guys. Mm -hmm. And so I think Chris Towers, and I'm not singling out anybody, but Chris has Dalvin Cook, I think, is, is the only one as a top 12 guy. Maybe Heath does also. Right. Um, I think, uh, I know, Adam, I think you had Joe Mixon relatively high. I, yeah, um, I think I have him like – in the top first round pick, I think I'm right. at. So you know, I, you know, I'm 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 kind of looking at you know where where we're coming at it. You know, the five of us, um, our five analysts are coming at it as well. You know, and just kind of factor that in also, and then the draft that we just did. So it's just kind of those type of things. But then also again, you know, looking at the season and just circumstances. So Waddle's a, a a tough guy right now to say should he be a second round pick if if it's a, a Skylar Thompson. I mean, if, if, it, if, no. if it's a yes, a, a, oh, but a it's not going to be. But I mean. Every indication. We, that, that's what I'm saying. We, 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 I don't know if he's a second round pick with Tua Tunga Vilo. Hundred percent is if you just look at his stats with Tua, he's a top seven wide receiver, top seven. Right, but but, but when you're talking about if if they don't find the right answer, you know, and if it's maybe hitting the reset button and going back and getting another young player, you know, whether it's a rookie or trying to figure out what the position is. We we just don't know. We don't know what Tua's health is. Don't we? Don't we? Right now, based on what we've seen, the reports and everything that. Don't we go into it thinking Tua Tonga by is going to be their starting quarterback next year? Yes, but again, you, you've now seen multiple concussions, and is there concern that he's never going to be the same guy and play a full season? So uh, you have to factor that in when you're when you're looking at him and ranking him. Waddle. Yeah. All right. Well, we are going to talk about some of those guys. We're going to talk about Dalvin Cook. Talk about Justin Herbert. Um, let me do some quick news and notes here. Injuries, news and notes. Uh, Lamar Jackson did not travel with the team. And in case you missed this on that quarterback sneak that ended up being the touchdown for Sam Hubbard, uh, Tyler Huntley was supposed to go low, He's supposed to go kind of under his offensive line. He let, he leaped over and had the ball knocked out. So John Harbaugh actually called him out for that. Um, <clears throat> but uh, Lamar Jackson not being with the team, you know, I think a lot of people are, are looking at that and thinking he's not going to play with the Ravens anymore. Dave, who's who do you think the quarterback for the Ravens is going to be next season? I have absolutely no clue, and they need to have a clue on who they want to have at quarterback if they're willing to let Lamar go. And maybe they're not ready to make that decision yet because the one decision that they can make that makes a ton of sense is franchise him, and that buys them a little bit of time. They can field some trade offers if they want to. They can work on possibly a contract extension with him and keep him, or they can just let him play on the franchise tag. But at bare minimum, giving him the franchise tag, it, it makes all the sense in the world for them to do that. It's just a matter of whether that leads to him moving on to another team or him staying there. I would expect that to happen. And if he's healthy and ready to go, maybe they just get together and they say, look, we, you don't have a better option than us. We're going to pay you this. Why don't you stick around? We'll see if we can make it work. Ravens are typically one of the better franchises in the league about making something like that happen. I, I will say this, though. You know, his, his social media posts, not traveling with the team. 
just go back to last offseason. Kyler Murray scrubbed his social media accounts. Debo Samuel scrubbed his social media accounts. They were done with the team mm -hmm. from a public mm -hmm. standpoint, and they got their deals and everything was kumbaya. You know, so I think you just got to keep an eye on what's you know still uh, ahead for these uh, for this, these parties involved. Um, if they come to the table with with a contract that he's willing to accept. He'll be Mr. Raven again, you know, and if not, they have the control because they can franchise tag him. So um, Jason Lacanfora, who's, uh, you know, still does work for us at CBS, but he's very tied into the Ravens as a radio show in Baltimore. You know, he suggested and I think other people have suggested as well that it might be time to blow it up in Baltimore, you know, just because it just hasn't worked. And, and maybe it's time that uh, the Lamar Jackson experiment is just not what the Ravens need. And so if that happens, though, you're probably seeing a, a, a cleaning up uh, maybe everybody but Harbaugh, you know, so. Uh, just something to keep an eye on there. But I, I I would guess right now, 2023, first snap, week one, if everybody's healthy, Lamar Jackson's quarterback. Okay. Cincinnati left tackle Jonah Williams has a dislocated kneecap. He is week to week. They have a very, very thin offensive line going into that mm -hmm. game at Buffalo. Uh, Russell Gage, you probably saw it last night, was carted off in the final minutes of that game. He does have feelings in his extremities, so that's good. Uh, feeling in his extremities so that you know that's a great sign hopefully hoping for the best for russell gage looks like matthew stafford and sean mcveigh are coming back next season mcveigh for sure um, reportedly stafford as well uh, for the rams and same thing with the dolphins uh, mike mcdaniel and tua tonga vailoa uh, reportedly going to be you know the head coach and quarterback for the dolphins this happened just before our show the chargers fired uh, Joe Lombardi, their offensive coordinator. So I think when, when we talk about Justin Herbert, we can talk more about that. But I think we all want to see them throw the ball downfield a little bit more. And ultimately, yeah. their biggest problem this season was terrible red zone offense. Just not good enough, not scoring enough touchdowns. And that was one of the things that lost them that game, that 27 nothing game uh, against Jacksonville. Uh, there's a lot of coaching stuff going on. Carolina received permission to interview Sean Payton. Reportedly, the, the Saints want um, a first-round pick for Payton. And Cleveland hired Jim Schwartz as defensive coordinator. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I got one question for each eliminated team. That is six teams, one question for each of them. As we go into the offseason, we'll be right back on Fantasy Football today. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for bearing with us on an unusual in an unusual show. I mean, I can just I don't know what Dave means to everybody at fantasy football today. He's just, he is our show. He's just like our, our heart and soul and Jamie too. And you know, and you know, Heath and me, I guess to a much lesser extent, but those two guys have been there forever. Dave has been there forever. Um, he means so much to all of us. And uh, we thought he needed an episode basically to celebrate Dave getting into the hall of fame. So I know it was longer than we expected, but, Thank you for uh, for for you know. It was weird. The part of it. <laughs> I mean, I love seeing all my, all of our old friends, but it was weird. And seeing was, everybody come in, great. that was awesome too. But weird, a little weird. Go ahead. All right, one question for. What were you thinking when it happened? <laughs> you have any idea what's going on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. As soon as ever, <laughs> I see this giant thing, like you, you'll watch the video and you'll see a big giant goalpost with like a four leaf clover at the bottom for some stupid reason. It's from his son's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the king of, of kickbacks and repackaging. Okay, fine. Um, no, I I mean, I knew what was going on. I was, you know, staring a hole through your head. <laughs> because I've told you for years not to bother doing this. All right, enough of this. Enough of this. Let's talk about the playoffs. All right. Question for Seattle. Ken Walker or Derrick Henry in 2023? And I'll tell you that in PPR, Derrick Henry, PPR. Actually, had more catches than Walker. He averaged yep. five more fantasy points per game than Ken Walker. It, that's very deceiving because Walker played those games when Rashad Penny was healthy. Right. You got to take those first five out. You didn't yeah. Azer stat that? There's, I did. Yeah, I've I, got I, it. I, I can. Yeah. I mean, there's 17 game pace, Walker versus Henry. Very, very similar, actually. <clears throat> uh, but who do you guys like better, Walker or Henry in 2023? I, I leaned with the youth and I took Kenneth Walker, who's seven years younger than Derrick Henry and does have room to improve as a pass catcher if Seattle wanted to go that route. From week six on, he averaged 15.9 full PPR points per game. That was 3.2 fewer than Derrick Henry. I still don't see a, a path for Derrick Henry to become a 50-catch guy. And I really want to see what happens with the Titans' offense um, in the coming months. What are they going to do with their offensive line? What are they going to do at quarterback? There, there's a lot in play, and there's some obvious risk with Henry at this point because he will be 29 next season. Play caller as well uh, for Tennessee. And, um, you know, I, I just look at it. There's uh, 
everything trending in the right direction for Seattle. They got pick five, they got pick 20 in the first round. Um, you know, so they have the opportunity to, you know, enhance their offense. The only thing that concerns me is, you know, Derrick Henry is going to be the guy. Pete Carroll is Mr. Preach Competition. And will they bring in somebody else? It's not going to be a first round pick. It's not going to be a high price free agent. Could be Rashad Penny. Could be back. right. That's what I was about but to say. are they going to bring in somebody of significance to compete with Walker? So that's the one thing you got to keep an eye on. But right now, as it stands, following the the playoffs, I, I'm taking Ken Walker. I have them four spots apart in my running back rankings, and about Ooh. ten spots apart in uh, no, not that much, like seven spots apart in the top twenty four. Can you do you have your running back rankings open? Can you run he's, down he's, Walker? Walker's who else, five. Who else, who else? Uh, yeah, like who's I have Etienne over, over Derrick Henry as well. Okay. Um, I'm I'm just I'll probably be out on Henry. Uh. For me, so I think he's ninth. Uh, it's um, right now. It's Walker, Etn, Mixon, Jacobs, Henry, and so okay. Jacobs will be dependent on where he where he plays. And right right behind Henry is Brees Hall. Brees Hall is one hundred percent. Brees Hall will be ahead. Oh, of you got to put Brees Hall if he's one hundred percent. He looks good ahead of Derrick Henry. I agree yep. with that. Uh, I've got Walker and Henry back to back, five and six among running backs. Okay, yeah. And, and in the first draft, we did Henry did go ahead of Walker. It's uh, it's interesting because neither of these guys are, are big pass catchers, and um. You know, Walker wasn't their third down back, so that might limit, you know, both of their upside. But, you know, it, it's not, it doesn't seem to be quite as important as it used to be uh, that, you know, to be an elite running back without the big pass catching role. Okay. Anyway, well, I wouldn't say that elite, but like top, you know, seven, eight, it's top six, seven. Yeah, you know, that's fine. Top one or two, unlikely for the Walker, I would say, unless he starts catching a lot more passes. Um, all right. Chargers. What happened to Justin Herbert? He went from QB three per game in 2021 to QB 15 per game in 2022. And even if you look at there, I think there are only four games, five games where he had both a healthy Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. He scored 21.5, 8.7, 5.5, 20.7, 22.8 fantasy point. That's I mean, fine in three of those five games, terrible in two of those five games. Um, so what happened to Justin Herbert? Dave. You know, he still set a career high in pass attempts and completion rate, and he wasn't really off target. But the three biggest things that I saw when I dug into the data, his touchdown rate plummeted. You touched on that already, Adam. Uh, career low, 3.6%. He was in the fives in his first two years of his career. Zero rushing touchdowns. He had eight touchdowns on the ground through his first two seasons. And his completion in his dot was actually lower without Keenan Allen than with Keenan Allen. If you look at weeks two through 10, completion rate was just below 65%. 6.2 A dot, 11 touchdowns. Week 11 through their wild card game, the completion rate was almost 70%. A dot of 6.5, that's still low, but something that was higher with Allen, 12 touchdowns in nine games. I think Keenan Allen was a part of it. I think injuries were a big part of it. Remember, he hurt his ribs. Yeah. His offensive line went through a ton of other injuries. And you, you mentioned it. They struggled a little bit in the red zone, and he didn't chuck it downfield nearly as much as, as we'd seen in the past, or maybe not had as much success doing so as we had seen in the past. I I, I think I'm going to be in on Justin Herbert next year because his draft stock, you called him a loser. You're not calling him a loser in terms, Jamie, of him being like you're out on Justin no, Herbert next no, year, no. but you're going to be able to get him at a much better round next year than you did this year. He's, he's going to go at best fifth. He's going to go behind Mahomes and Allen. Yep. And this Hurts, past year he was, going, he was going ahead of Mahomes. He was the second quarterback. He was my second. He's going to go behind Hertz, and he's going to go behind Burrow. I mm -hmm. think those four are, agree. are almost certainly going to go ahead of him. Now, Burrow may slide. That's something I think that could be debated. And Fields may jump him if he stays in Chicago, and they add a lot to it, You know, depending on what they do at their draft because of what he does as a rusher. Lamar Jackson may also go ahead of Herbert if he's back in Baltimore. I know Heath, for example, likes Lamar Jackson still as a top-five guy. Yep. And so they're, 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 he's in that mix now, I think, of – Guys that you will settle for, and, and I use that in not necessarily a derogatory way, but someone that you'll be happy to get. Um, Trevor Lawrence may jump him too. I mean, you know, that's a guy that's 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 ascending and is going to get Calvin Ridley a, a significant piece. So uh, we'll see who the play caller is. We'll see what happens with the receiving core because Keenan Allen's not getting younger. Uh, but the offensive line, when healthy, is great. The running back catches passes as well as anybody in the league. Uh, Mike Williams is still a tremendous playmaker. You know, we'll see if what they do with Gerald Everett, but. There's a lot to love about Justin Herbert. And remember, you know, you, you, you mentioned Adam. Why did he fall off? He lost Mike Williams and Keenan Allen for the majority of the beginning part of the season. And so not having those guys and trying to readjust, playing through a rib injury. Literally 46 off. snaps of Keenan Allen between weeks one and eight. Yeah, it was one and sorry, weeks one and ten. It was uh it was, I think at one point they had played 17 snaps together 
Williams, Allen, and Herbert, you know, because of Something how much like those, those yeah. guys had missed. And so um, Josh Palmer is somebody that that's on the rise, and hopefully the new play caller will will be able to un- unlock that more than just uh, an injury replacement. So, uh, yeah, he's he's going to be one of the best values on draft day uh, for his position. I don't mm-hmm. think what we saw last year is is the norm. And the ceiling that we got two years ago may not be the norm either, but, you know, I think he's probably closer to that than he is what we saw in 2023. Yep. Okay. Yeah, they got the 22nd pick in the draft, so I, I would love to see that. That's a good wide receiver range, so I'd love to see them upgrade at wide receiver. Kid from TCU would be awesome there. Yeah, I don't know if he'll make it that far, but, you know, uh, some some someone exciting will probably be there at 22. Mm-hmm. All right, Miami. Question for Miami. Is Tua Tungabailoa a top 12 quarterback in 2023? On a per-game basis, he was number nine in four-point uh, per passing touchdown leagues, number seven in six-point. And that was, remember, leaving the Bengals game early. That included the Packers game, where a lot of people think he was playing with a concussion in the second half. He threw three interceptions. It's very possible. So uh, is Tua Tungabailoa a top-12 quarterback in 2023? I don't think so. I don't think he could draft it that way. He certainly can finish that way. But I think just based on what we what we know right now, you know, the fact that multiple concussions – uh, you know, this is a guy that had a hip injury in college, an ankle injury in college, concussion concerns now. Um, he had other injuries before this year, too. Yeah, but it's, it's you know, significant chunks of time that, that he's, he's had to miss. And so the system is fantastic. Now, we saw, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of the, the big games, for the most part, came before they sort of got figured out a little bit. You know, the West Coast trip where the 49ers, the Chargers, you know, and then even coming back to Buffalo, I know he played well against Buffalo, but those two games in particular, it seemed as if Mike McDaniel's system got a little bit, you know, uh, you know, understood. Yes. Um, so I, I think it's Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddell, you can make a case the best wide receiver doing the league, and they played that way this season. So that's a huge advantage. Um, offensive line, you know, I, I, I don't know if it, what Teron Armstead's going to be next year. You know, he struggled down the stretch. Is he still their their premier left tackle in terms of being that guy? So the uh, run game needs to be a little bit better, clearly. They need to find an, an answer to that. And maybe there's a tight end that's brought in to be actual a uh, George Kittle, which is what I think Mike made. See, there's some things that 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 you found out a little bit throughout the season that before they got Tyree Kill, Mike McDaniel was planning on Mike Kosecki having a much bigger role. Then Tyree Kill comes in, understood and he so. changed the whole plan. He changed he yep. changed everything the way that it went. Kosecki's gone. He's not coming back. They're not gonna franchise him again. So do they get more of a 49ers West Coast tight end that fits that system a little bit better. They might already so, have one. Uh, maybe they do, but you know that, that that's that's something I think you got to keep an eye on. So I, I think there's still a lot to love about Tua, but if uh, the, we're doing a draft in in about a half hour, uh, if if it comes down to me and my I'm the last guy to take quarterback and it's Tua and Daniel Jones, I'm taking Daniel Jones. That's interesting because I mean Tua <clears throat> was looking like the big rising star. He led the NFL in yards per attempt by a mile. Um, they were actually a pretty pass heavy team. They just ran. So they were 27th in plays. And that happens. I think when you get a lot of big plays, they didn't run a lot of plays, but they were very pass heavy. Second fewest rush attempts in the NFL. He's got those great wide receivers. Obviously he looked like he was breaking out. Um, yeah, he did finish. He did finish somewhat poorly, but if you look at it, look at the last four games he played the Houston game looks bad on paper. He played two and a half quarters, San Francisco and the chargers. They were bad. Uh, I don't remember. Did Armstead play in, Maybe one of those games. I think he missed the San Francisco game. Um, I'm not sure. He, I think you're right. He definitely missed. I believe it was Week 18 against uh, the Patriots. But uh, that um, yeah, two of though. So uh, two. I think he missed the San Francisco game, and they, he would. They, they he was a huge difference maker for them, Teron Armstead, and he's injured all the time now. But uh, anyway, you know, there's a lot to like about Tua, but also you kind of look at like he just kind of crushed some. He had four huge games, and other than that, he wasn't great, and um, the only thing about the concussions, if people are going to say no because of the concussions, I don't want Tua. It's possible that their GM, Chris Greer, is telling the truth, and he said he is not more, based on what we've heard from our doctors, he is not more susceptible to concussions than anyone else. It might have just been a bad run in that regard. So that's what the Dolphins are saying right now. They don't think Tua is more susceptible to concussions. He just had some bad luck this year. Throwing that out there. Yeah, so he's going to be a late-round pick that you'll have if you're streaming quarterback to begin the season. If you start your season with Daniel Jones and Tua Tungavailoa as your quarterbacks, just as an example, Jamie, you said you'd take Daniel Jones first. Maybe you'll take both. I know you're not a guy that likes to take no, but I, yeah, But I, that's the yep. type of guy that Tua has to be. You can't make him your quarterback and that's it to begin the season unless it's a super deep league. 
But I, I would imagine the Dolphins realize that they've got to stick with Tua. And if they're going to build around him, and they'll try and upgrade at the backup quarterback spot. Look, they 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 went into it with, I'm assuming the plan of, is Tua our guy, for performance and for health. Teddy Bridgewater is one of the best backup quarterbacks you can find. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a guy with you know, starting experience. And when he started, he's certainly been more than capable of leading a team. We've seen it. He just had an unfortunate injury situation himself. He got concussed when Tua got concussed. He broke his thumb when Tua was out. So they the they line. they had the plan. Right. It's just a matter of. Will the other guy that they bring in next year, whether it's Teddy or somebody else, be better than Tua? And what I mean by that is, can he, if Tua misses time, can he be step as in good or better? And Wally Pippen, right? You know, and so that's the concern. You know, Jimmy Garoppolo's got ties to Mike McDaniel. Is that a route they go? I'd be stunned if he made. I, you it. never know, right? <clears throat> I hear you it. never know. All right, next question here. Let's talk about the Vikings. When will you draft Dalvin Cook? You alluded to it earlier, Dave. I'll give you the first word. When will you draft Dalvin Cook, who on a per game basis? Was 12th in uh, non PPR, 14th at running back in full PPR. That's per game. When will you draft Dalvin Cook? I would look at him in late round two, if not round three. 15.1 PPR points per game in 2021, 14 PPR points per game in 2022. He will be in his age 28 season. We've come to love him as a fantasy stud, but I think you've just got to view him through the lens that we talked about. Look at the game that he just had against the Giants one of the worst run defenses in the National Football League. He gets over 20 touches, doesn't come through for a huge game, had some nice runs. Uh, I'll tell you what, there there were moments in the Buffalo game where I was watching James Cook play, and I thought to myself, that's the Cook that I want to (laughs) get. Like, I'd rather get James Cook in the – I don't even know if I can say the middle rounds because he might end up going as a trendy breakout pick in round six or round seven. I'd rather have that value than Dalvin Cook between 20th and 30th overall. For me, it's round three. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't think I'll get Dalvin Cook if he's, uh, if he's going around two. Um, we'll see. Again, you know, they have some issues. Uh, how healthy is the right tackle going to be? You know, after, um, you know, Neil suffered the, I think it was Achilles or, or ACL, something you know significant. Um, how healthy is, Bra- or I'm sorry, is Bradbury going to be back? Their center. Uh, he's a free agent. You know, so that's two key pieces on the offensive line. Who's the backup going to be? Because Madison's a free agent. You know, does he walk and do they bring They've in They've got some interesting guys. Well, you know, is, is it Nwagnu or is it somebody else Ty that comes Chandler in? Chandler could be that guy. He's, sure. just a little, he's a little old too. Um, but is it somebody that, you know, they go out and they and they draft because they know that Dalvin Cook is not their long-term answer anymore. You know, so there, there's a lot of play here with Dalvin. But uh, it's a great offense as a whole. He just did not take the step forward, I think, that a lot of us were hoping for, especially after all the preseason reports of him being more involved in the passing. Right. That completely did not happen. Yeah. They were more pass heavy this year. Oh, much that, that, that's the difference between Mike Zimmer coaching and Kevin O'Connell coaching. Yeah. And you see it all the time with former quarterbacks that become play callers. They view the offense. <clears throat> I got what Jamie's got. Uh, <laughs> they view the offense through the, the quarterback. And that's why Cousins had a big year. Um, they could cut him and save eight million bucks. Let me see. I'm just I'm looking at it's got a, two million is guaranteed in late March. Um, they I think next year is probably more likely when they let him go. But if they really wanted to move on from him now, they could do it and not really take a big cap hit. I think the biggest difference for Cook, I, if you just, you know, you're not really into the numbers and I just, you just played fantasy, you know, Dalvin Cook wasn't as good as he normally was. It was touches. You know, the argument for Dalvin Cook was that he was still a pretty good running back. He wasn't an elite running back this year, but he, he averaged 17.8 touches per game. That's catches plus carries. He averaged 19.2 carries the year before. So uh, just carries 19.2 to touches 17.8. And that's 15.5 carries per game. This guy was a workhorse. You could rely on him for a lot of 20 carry weeks, you know, 15.5 carries per game. That was the biggest difference for Dalvin Cook. He wasn't really bad. He just didn't get the work that he needed. His target share has been pathetic. 14.3% 14.3% target share, and that's been going down three straight years now. So you can't count on that. But if they say, hey, we're going to commit to the run more, then maybe that could boost Dalvin Cook stocks. I just wanted to bring that factor in. Um, I, don't, right. I don't think that happens, though. I, I right. don't think that's Kevin O'Connell's offense. Um, and, and again, you know, I, I'll go back to what I said with the, the regard to the, the, the story I just wrote. He had 21 total touches in this game against the Giants. If you were to say right now, Dalvin Cook averaged four yards per carry, which is probably low for where his career is, I'm going to guess. But four yards per carry and six catches. 
and I told you 21 total touches, you would have said, what were his total number? Yeah, it was a bad game, but that, that's but he didn't average. What I'm saying, no, I'm saying if you were to say right now for Dalvin Cook, uh-huh. 21 total touches, six of them being catches in PPR, what do we yeah. think he would have scored? Oh, 20 plus, you know. Yeah. Right. He had 13 PPR points without. Him. And that happened a bunch this year. That's one right. Thing, but yeah. I mean, <clears throat> right. It was a bad game. It was, and he finished really bad, too. Actually, his last several games, the Bears, the Packers. He right. really, I mean, are you interested in knowing how many games he had with north of 15? PPR, or do we add and then we'll go to our last two questions? This year, well, he started off the year without getting any games north of 15 until week four. One, two, three, four, five, six games all year with 15 or more full PPR, decimal scoring. Um, I just might yeah. not be the same guy. 22nd, 22nd among running backs and targets per game. That's low. Had number he had number two fantasy running back numbers. I think that's his ceiling now. I don't know. I mean, if it, he also had a more bad touchdown luck, he had eight touchdowns in seventeen games, eight rushing touchdowns, two receiving touchdowns. He had a lot of he had like the third most carries inside the five yard line. And he only had eight rushing touchdowns. So uh, I don't. I just don't. I don't think he's like a scrub. I don't know. Nobody thinks that. But he just right. Got but where were where he's, were he's we no, taking he's, Dalvin he, Cook last year? Top top ten. He's, he's where is he, he now? He's no longer to me a, a top twenty four pick. Okay, let's go to Baltimore here. Um, which Mark Andrews do we get in 2023? Andrews averaged 19.1 fantasy points per game in his first six games. Unbelievable. And then 8.4 fantasy points per game in PPR in his last nine games. That does include one game that he left with an injury. But even if you remove that, it wouldn't be very good. Which Mark Andrews do we get in 2023, Jamie? I think you get a very good fantasy tight end. I don't think you're going to get the elite player that we saw in 2021. I don't think you're going to get the the guy who was a bust for a good portion of the 2022 campaign i think he's a solid number one fantasy tight end top three upside you're still drafting him second based on what he can do because he still feels a little bit better than tj hawkinson or kyle pitts or george kittle or these guys uh they're all up for discussion you know maybe not pitts but they're all up for discussion dallas goddard um of of what you know andrews is so he's fallen you know we went into the this season saying there were two there was kelsey and andrews and then the field. Now it feels like there's Kelsey in the field. And so Andrews has fallen back to the field. Not that that's a bad thing, but uh, I don't think you can expect 17 plus PPR points per game. I think you're looking at maybe 14 to 15. And that's why he's the number two guy and should not be a top 24 pick. But it's it's the discount again. We talked about it with Justin Herbert, and it's not going to be the same like level of discount as Justin Herbert will be in fantasy drafts in 23. I bet he still goes in round three. Someone's going to take him in round three in every single draft. If he somehow makes it to round four, that's amazing value. And I, I would expect that he will continue to be a big part of that Baltimore offense. The only thing I can think of is if the Ravens make crazy wholesale changes and they get a new quarterback and they trade for DeAndre Hopkins or something like that, or they add another receiver and they take somebody, they bring somebody on the field that's going to target the wideouts more than the tight end, target the perimeter, not the middle of the field, and maybe throw. I mean, they already throw pretty low volume. I would, but that I would just think if they, if, if they change the offense, it's a huge boost for Mark Andrews because then you're talking about a more traditional passing attack. And so, yeah. right. And, and if he, there's and, somebody else taking 100 targets or 120 I, I, targets over the course of the season, I, I mean, think that obviously Marquise Brown him. was a 100 target guy in this offense. Mm-hmm. And that was in his best season, in Mark Andrews' best season two years ago. Right. So I, I don't think that that's necessarily a concern. But if you say just let, let and I'm going to use this a lot. Okay. To me, it's, it's, it's Derek Carr or better. So if you get Derek Carr right now, let's say you put Derek Carr in Baltimore. Does Derek Carr make Mark Andrews better or worse? I would say better because now you're running an offense that's probably throwing the ball 35 times a game. Traditional and West so Coast if, style. If, right. if you're doing that, and again, the coordinator wouldn't matter here, but if you're doing that, and let's just say they bring in, you want to use DeAndre Hopkins as, as the, the benchmark as well, they bring in DeAndre Hopkins. That's kind of a high benchmark. But, but but he's the biggest name that's, that's available at that position. Right. You know? So we're not talking about an Isaiah Hodgins you know, going somewhere, you know, we're talking Juju, let's say Juju. So Juju goes to Baltimore. We That was a rumor. Sure. So Juju goes to Baltimore. I think there's 150 targets available for Mark Andrews in that range. You know, maybe not that high, but 130. And I think there's a hundred targets for, for Juju. And I think it'll give it, you tell me Mark Andrews is going to 130 mm-hmm. targets. See, I, I don't know if he'll get 130, but I still think he's going to be a good fantasy. If, if, if there's, if there's 35 passes per game from a quarterback, that's not Lamar. 
See, I well, even if it's Lamar, if they if they and I, 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 think that, I don't, I don't even want even if it's Derek Carr quarterback, I don't think they're going to move to a position where they say, okay, yeah, let's throw more. When this entire franchise no, but has but, been running the but ball that's, so but well. That's what I'm saying. If they moved. if they move on from Lamar Jackson, they are going a complete 180. That, that there's no reason to get away I don't from know it. If they will Lamar go Jackson's been an MVP. They're still going to want to. They've run the been. Ball. Oh, of course, they're going to still run the ball. But I'm talking about when they when when I'm saying they're hitting the reset button. I think everybody, and maybe including Harbaugh, but Harbaugh makes the most sense to stay mm-hmm. because why would you get rid of him? Of course. But the GM's the one that built this team, so he's probably got to go. The offense coordinator certainly has got to go. And then it's everything else is changing. And so if everything else is changing, yes, they're going to want to run the ball. Why would you ever get away from what they has been successful better. for you? Exactly. But if they're replacing Lamar Jackson, they're replacing Lamar Jackson to be a more 2022 offense and to throw the ball more mm. and be more in that regard. I don't regard. Think it's going to be more of a like 2018 offense that they replace. But, but again, I, I'm, 2022, I'm not, I'm, you want Lamar. I'm not saying Derek Carr. I'm saying that type of player, you know, a, a, a retread guy. Pocket passer that's, stays, that's, that's doesn't not, move right, that, too that's, much. That, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. yeah. All right, last question here. It's for Tampa Bay. If Tom Brady returns anywhere, can you see Tom Brady being a fantasy stud again? No. Really hard to see. Because if you look at the, the possible <laughs> destinations, right? Ian Rappaport said this over the weekend. It's Tampa Bay, again, they're still going to be in the mix. Sounds like he said goodbye to them last night, though. San Francisco, which to me would be crazy at this point. Tennessee, can never see that there. That'd be weird. And Las Vegas. So if he goes to Las Vegas, maybe. Now, two things would have to happen. I think Josh Jacobs is gone, and they don't have a rushing leader coming back. So it's a... It's more of a Tom Brady type running running game, where there's a you know hybrid type of guy that's going to catch the ball and be a little bit more on the pass catching side. Um, unless again, they're, and, and if they if it's still Jacobs, I think they're they're a more balanced offense. He's not throwing the ball forty times a game. Um, the offensive line's got to be much better than what he had in Tampa Bay. No matter where and, he goes, and, and Las Vegas has to in, invest in that. So I don't think he's you know he's forty six. I mean, look, he, you know, you could say offensive line, you could say. Godwin not healthy to be in the season, uh, no Gronk, all these things. He just looked old. You know, I mean, he really did. You know, he had some great moments. Um, a lot of fourth quarter, you know, miraculous plays. Uh, he was let down by his receiving core. Mike Evans had a big drop beam again last night, you know, when the game was out of reach. Yep. And, you know, they, they got the ball back on the onside kick. But, no, no longer an elite fantasy quarterback. Can he still be a starting fantasy quarterback? Yes. Can he still be somebody that you you take as a second guy and he ends up being 10 through 12, 10 through 15? Right. Sure. But – he doesn't run. You're asking him to be, you know, 4,500 yards and 40 touchdowns again, and that's a lot for no, a 46-year-old dude. No, he just had a season with 25 touchdowns. You saw the floor. And he attempted 43 passes per game during the regular season. Yeah. Is he going to do that again when he's 46 going into 47? I, I find it hard to believe that he'll go to a place where he's going to want to throw the ball. Uh, I mean, maybe he'll want to throw the ball, but the coaching staff will want him to throw the ball 40 times a game. I just don't think it's it's sustainable. I do think the offensive line was a humongous problem all year. And I think it put him in the mindset of, I, I got to get rid of this ball quick. I got to get it out as soon as I get it because I don't want to get hit. I don't want to get injured. And so he needs like an all-pro style offensive line. Think of the best offensive line in football. Uh, Dallas has a really good offensive line right Philly, now. Sure. Yep. Philly's got an awesome one. If he had an offensive line like that, I could see him being good for fantasy, but I still feel like the ceiling is what you said, 10 to 12 among quarterbacks. Nah, I think if he went to Philly and he yeah. had that line and those receivers, then I think he could he could maybe be top five again. But uh, that's top not... has a lot to ask, though. I know. I don't run. Yeah, and it is, but he did it last year, you know, so. But um, no one's going to draft him with that in mind, and no one's going to draft him with, with that type of upside. He's not going to go to Philly. I, I don't think. Of he'll course be. not. I don't think he's. <laughs> no, going I, I do think. I do think. You know, when you look at openings, Miami. There was obviously the story last year. You know, so is, is that something that they would revisit? And you know, would would they really consider? You know, bringing him in with that doesn't seem likely. Uh, the Jets might make some sense. You know, for yeah, for a team yeah. that would, I'm sure, drive Patriots fans crazy. Um, but they have an opening. They might like they have, it at this point. They have some nice receivers, but does he want to play in the cold? To me, it's Las Vegas. I, I think it's Vegas or bust at this point. There's an opening. There's a coach he's familiar with. There's good weapons there. If they can just invest in the offensive line, which seems like there's something that they could do, then that's the spot he goes to. The only problem is if you're him and you're looking to compete for another Super Bowl, you got to go through Mahomes. You got to go through potentially still Herbert. 
and whatever the Broncos throw at you. It's a very tough path, especially with Kansas City. Okay, folks. Hall of Famer, Dave Richard. And Nando DeFino. Shout out to him. Yeah. Um, it's been a I'm special excited day. for Nando. And uh, thank you to Heath, Nando, Scott Fish, James Quistel, Nathan Segura, Jason Horowitz, Pete Prisco, eventually Will Brinson. Um, thank you, Jamie, for setting this up. Dave, you should know Jamie did a lot of work setting this up. Uh, it's, uh, I believe that. Yes. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, everybody. To Thomas. All Schaefer sarcastic. As well. Yeah. It really was. Show. Hope everybody enjoyed it. Good I'm shaved, you know, for the big day. Yeah. I <laughs> got dressed up. Yeah. I showered, though. That was, you know, that was oh, new. God. We got he thought of vacation to come on, and he even brushed his hair. I I tried. I put conditioner in. I thought it would help. But uh, still, I got just got to get a haircut. All right, later, everybody. We'll talk to you tomorrow.